Hi, welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to introduce you to the subject of engineering drawing. Engineers build machines that can make tunnels inside a mountain or under a sea, airplanes that can fly from New, New Delhi to New York in just 15 and a half hours non-stop. They can make lifts that can take you to the top floor of 118 story buildings in just 55 seconds at a speed of 73.8 km an hour. These are just a few examples of the amazing feats engineers have done in the fields of building, bridges, space, scientific exploration, medical devices, transportation and many more. So all these kind of inventions have happened because of the engineering engineering field and when we talk about engineering we always give reference to these kind of pictures for a layman this may look like a picture but for an engineer it gives all the information that is necessary to make something so for example they give the actual view of the machine different projections different views and also it provides you different dimensions all in a way it is like a coded uh, language a language that only engineers can understand or those who have the knowledge of technical drawings or engineering drawings they can understand so this is works like a language because using these kind of drawings one can communicate between different departments within a company or between two different companies. For example, this is an engineering drawing. So here you can see the view which is called isometric view of the object that is being made. But this gives further details. So here this is like a 3D picture. It is good to view this one. But in this one, we cannot understand how this has been made. What are different parts? What are their dimensions? And so these views have been developed, which provide very detailed information about the product. So all have been done in a proper way, in a set standards. So these standards will describe how the drawing should be drawn and even the, the lettering has got some standards. How the dimensions will be shown has got standards and even how the layout of the drawing sheet will look also has been standardized or coded. So for example here you can see this drawing sheet has been divided into eight parts one two three four and so on and on this side it is written as a b c d here you can see very particular way of writing the, the information about this drawing and there are places where people can actually sign off so so they will sign when they have made the drawing that means they take the responsibility for any error so it has to be error free and that's why a standard is followed so that two different people or two different companies or departments can understand what it is all about. So we can introduce engineering drawing as an engineering drawing is a technical not artistic drawing which clearly defines and communicates a design to other interested parties. Other parties may have an interest in design collaboration, procurement, purchasing, costing, manufacturing, quality control, marketing, handling, packaging and so on. So this drawing is basically a way to communicate. That means when an engineer or a technical person has an idea and he or she wants to communicate this idea to other parties, then he or she will use engineering drawing or it is often also known as technical drawing. So let us consider this. Example 1. 
The V block is to be made of cast iron and machined in all surfaces. Machined on all surfaces. The overall sizes are 57 mm height, 76 mm wide and 152 mm long. A V-shaped cut having an inclined angle of 90 degree is to be made through the entire length of the block. The cut is to be made with the block resting on the 75 mm by 152 mm surface. The V cut is to begin 7 mm from the outside edges. At the bottom of the V cut there is to be a relief slot 5 mm wide by 3 mm deep. Now this is this explains an object, an engineering object that is to be made which is called V block. But by reading this text, full text, it is very difficult to imagine what this object is and therefore it will be nearly impossible. This is a, a simple um, product but imagine if the product or the object is more complex then you can have this much of text. It is just nearly impossible to imagine what this is all about but if one presents you a picture like this, this gives you a clear idea of what the object is. This is the example one that I have just read and this is example two. So by looking at this tutorial view you can understand what the object is, what the object is to be made. But now even looking at these images still it is very difficult to actually pinpoint the all the dimensions and all the views and therefore further Further development of this drawing has to be done, which is done by certain way that that is been that has been standardized in engineering drawing. So conclusion is that technical drawing compared to written description offers far better idea about the shape, size, and appearance of any machine structure that to in quite a less time. So just by viewing this kind of picture or image, we can understand exactly what the object is about. Now let me just uh, tell you a little bit about the history of technical drawing, how the technical drawing or engineering drawing came about. So many of the engineering wonders were created long before our modern industrial revolution started. They must have used some kind of a sketching perhaps on the ground or on slabs of stones before starting to make such complex they used the knowledge of geometry for making plans and elevations of the structure. So as you can imagine, for example, Grand Pyramid of Giza in Egypt was made 2570 BCE, so about 4593 years old. So this is a very, very complex structure because as you know, inside there are many, many chambers. So these complex structures were built by the ancient people and in order to build build this kind of complex structure they must have followed some sort of drawing some sort of technical drawing but today we do not have those drawings available to us we don't even know how they actually made those drawings similarly you can see these kind of temples in Greece temple of Hephaestos so these kind of temples are also very grand structures. They are 30 to 60 meters high and they were made quite long ago, about 900 BC to 1st century AD. These structures also are extremely complex to make and therefore some sort of drawing must have been used at, in those days. There's another example is Kailas Temple Ellora in India. This was made in 756 to 773 um, common era. So this was made out of a single block of stone. So carved out of single block and the temple height in, in this one is 32.6 meter. So this must have been carved from the top to bottom and therefore very precise uh, drawing or some scheme must have been followed. But these kind of knowledge that the ancient people had developed, we do not have now. 
many times these kind of things were made only once so they were not like it like a manufactured many times like in the present uh, context we do in the industrial practice we make the same product many many number of times but in the, those times only one uh, pieces of these kind of structures used to be made and people must have developed some skill in making engineering drawing but those knowledge and skills are not available today so the engineering drawing started from industrial development technical drawing in the present form was developed in 1765 by the french engineer gaspard monge and later the english engineer ik brunel in 1799 developed it further into what is now known as the orthographic projection system so orthographic projection system is was developed by brunel and before him it was developed by the french engineer gaspard monge it is a method of converting 3d object to be manufactured into a set of drawings on 2d papers the draftsman will make the drawing based on the engineer's idea of the final product brunel made the technical drawings of the block making machinery so basically during this time the art of developing engineering drawing was invented and then it was perfected with further development technical standards were developed by the engineering societies all of this led to the great developments in engineering design and manufacturing every aspect of engineering drawing was codified and made into standards such that regardless of who drafts the drawing it can be understood by all with the knowledge of engineering drawing thus it became a language of the engineers and technical personals involved as long as they all knew engineering drawing so as i said before this is a language a language that engineers and technical personnel will understand and communicate between each other a very good example is the uh, the drawing of the patent by wright brothers in 1908 they used this kind of drawing so these are engineering drawings so based on engineering drawing they drew this the drawing of the plane how it should look like and how it can be manufactured so by looking at this you can understand the whole uh, drawing of the airplane so this is a 3d view this is isometric view and these are orthographic views so here you can see the dimensions and so on as further development happened the engineering drawing became much more standard and many many tools were developed so for example different types of um, rulers set squares stencils were developed and the, the other tool which is called drafter was developed to actually help in the drawing so this is how engineers actually drew all the drawings of their machines or buildings or bridges or whatever they want to make so this is another example of a drawing sheet and here you can see the drawing sheet has been divided into several parts there is a border and there is a title block the title block gives full detail of what the drawing is all about and here you can see the drawing of the actual machine in different views so as we have seen this uh, drawing sheet so here also this is a shaft of a machine and you can see this is the side view from the right hand side and this is the side view from the left hand side again a section has been done so by sectioning you can see different parts of this one different aspects and this is also a section view here so if we cut this and look from beneath how it will look like so this is the section view here you can see all the details about the drawing and similarly here also you can see all the full detail of the drawing so by looking at this kind of drawing an engineer can understand exactly what the, um, the object is and for example if this kind of drawing is given to the manufacturing 
department, then manufacturing department will also understand how to make this machine, what, what it is. So that means there is no more further explanation. So this acts like a, a very complete language, a complete message or information. In another way, the drawings are also given in exploded view. So for example, if the, the machine is quite complex, here in this case it is not very complex, but still it has got many, many different parts. So this is a valve of a pipe. And so here different parts have been shown in exploded view. That means when we are bringing them all together, then we make the whole machine. So this has been brought outside so that one can see clearly how each item or each part is attached in the final product. But this exploded view is quite complex. This is of an airplane and you can see they are extremely complex drawing. And here each part has been given some number and those numbers have been described here. So then after this there will be several such drawings for each part. So that in those drawings, in those are called detailed drawings, we can see all the dimensions of each part. So this makes the whole complete engineering drawing. This is uh, exploded view of the valve just now we were talking about, but this has been produced using a CAD. So nowadays using computers or computer added design, we can actually make these kind of uh, drawings or make, we can develop this directly as a 3D model in the computer. So that helps in further correction or further changes. So the question is, with the advancement of computer aided design, uh, do we still need to learn engineering drawing or technical drawing? So the answer to this is yes, we still need to do or learn the engineering drawing or technical drawings because all the details, all the standards and the rules will be followed in the computer aided design in the CAD. So therefore those rules have to be known before actually we go for the computer edit design. Otherwise it will not be very, uh, it will not be possible to make out what the drawing is about. So therefore, even though CAD has been developed for, um, to make this whole process very easy, but still we need to learn the engineering drawing, technical drawing, and we need to learn all the standards, all the codes that has been developed because the same codes will be followed for CAD. So for example, this image has been developed using a CAD uh, software. And so here you can see the uh, image of a pump. But once uh, this kind of drawing is presented to you on a 2D paper, then you will need to understand each each dimension, each parts, how they are connected to each other and how they will be built. So all those information will be again printed in using the technical drawing or engineering drawing methods or standards. So therefore it is very important for us to learn the engineering drawing using the traditional manual method before actually we go on for the CAD design. So this is all about the introduction to engineering drawing, why we, what the engineering drawing is and why we need to learn this. So basically this knowledge is very very basic to all engineering field. So every engineering department will need to know the basics of engineering drawing. In other videos you will learn about the different aspects of engineering drawing, for example orthographic projections and other uh, skills you can learn in this video. Thank you very much. I hope you like this video and please do uh, click the like button and write your comments. Thank you very much.